Investment advisory services offered through Independent Solutions Wealth Management and Blackridge Asset Management LLC. P Broker Services LLC is not an affiliate of Independent Solutions or Financial Guys LLC. You're listening to the Financial Guys. We're twenty-three trillion dollars in debt, honey. We don't have an extra surplus of money. Newsflash, guys: stop attacking businesses because when all the businesses are gone, nobody's going to pay your salary anymore. You get that? If the goal is to create a loser mentality, well, you're winning. I'm going to build a right. big, beautiful wall with a big, beautiful door. Well, guess what? We have a big, beautiful door, all right. It's the <laughs> wide it's open southern border, right? Yeah. Here's Glenn Wiggle and Mike Lomas. All right, welcome back, everybody. You're listening to the Financial Guys podcast. I'm Glenn Wiggle here with Mike Lomas. Thanks you, Scott. Thanks you. Thank you so much for joining us. Whether you're listening on iTunes or, or Spotify or driving around in your car or, or jogging down the street. Oh, they can't jog down the street. I'm no. sorry. I'm gonna watch you outside. We'll get to that in a second. Those if are the old school days, Mr. Glenn. Old school yeah. days. If you're watching us on YouTube, thanks for that as well. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a like if you like the content. We certainly do appreciate it. And uh, shoot us a message if uh, if you think like us. Uh, if you don't think like us and you're still getting a paycheck while living in your mom's basement, uh, then don't even bother to call us at all. We would appreciate that. Um, you'll notice that this is not our normal podcast. We are still in quarantine mode. So I'm in my home office. Mike's in his home office. Actually, you're actually your office office. Technically, I can see the picture behind you. So I know you're in yeah. you're one of our offices. I can say which, but uh, so. We, <laughs> <laughs> you can't say which. I get, No, we're an essential business, so I'm allowed to be here. We are so. Essential business. so we do have folks in and out of the office. We're doing the best we can to minimize the risk, of course, but we are a money firm, of course. We do manage money for a living. And, you know, it's, I love all these politicians, right? We're going to talk about the pause. We're going to talk about the, you know, so the latest press conferences, all the updates, all the things that we, uh, we really haven't had a chance to talk about on the radio on Saturday. We've been trying to keep the radio board to information and, uh, you know, kind of up-to-date news, which is a lot of, right? I mean, people want to know about the pension protection, or the pension, the paycheck protection program. The that's, PP- that's next, by the way. Sorry, the pension protection is next. <laughs> that was during the Obama years. That was, that was the last stimulus that we did during Obama. It was yeah. all about protecting teachers' pensions. You know, the, the business owners be damned. Right. Uh, this time, at least this administration has actually carved out money uh, through the CARE Act to to, uh, to give money to uh, to small business owners, and I think the Paycheck Protection Program seems to be a pretty decent program. But the money doesn't last forever. We're going to talk a little bit about that today. And you know, these politicians. They have no idea. We're going to play some clips from Como today. We're going to go through some of the latest press conferences. We're going to talk about the latest update. By the way, and we'll talk about this, 16,000 people in the hospital as of yesterday. The projection as of last Wednesday was for a peak of hospitalizations to be at 75,000. I'm going to miss that. Way off, way off. You're not even close to a third of the actual numbers. But the thing that really drives me the most nuts, Mike, is we're still moving forward as if we're still like, you know, there's exponential growth in cases, which there's not. So there's these policies, when you hear this press conference, it sounds like they're sad. Well, yeah, things are getting better, but we can't let up. We got to get <laughs> closed. New York now has closed the economy essentially till the end of April. I thought Como would actually screw his head on straight and realize that he's going to have a huge budget hole if something's not done. He has given himself, by the way, for those that are not aware, king-like powers. He can now do whatever he wants with the budget. He has complete control. He doesn't need the legislature. He's passed all kinds of emergency powers that basically gives him total and complete uh, uh, emperor-like, uh, uh, basically, uh, abilities in New York State. I wonder, I, I wonder, though, is he getting to the point where he might officially want to just bankrupt us? I mean, and screw some of the bondholders? I mean, could that be the case that, you know, he just understands that him and his buddies have, have racked up so much debt that they're never going to get out of it. And this might be an excuse and an opportunity to say, sorry, we can't pay it back. Could be. Could be. I'll tell you one thing. The, the, uh, Donald Trump is doing an incredible job right now. I heard him last night talking once again about putting together a panel to get this, co- this country back to where we were. And we will get there. I'm so sick and tired of hearing people go, we'll never be the same. Guess what? I'm going out to dinner. I'm going out with my buddies. We're going to hang out. We're going to go out on a Saturday night. I'm going to have a glass of wine and a hot dog with my friends where, you know, that's the goal. I don't want to be uh, in a house forever. He was talking last night about a, a, a restaurant owner who's got a restaurant, 200 seats. 
And of course, some of these liberals are like, well, you're going to have to cut it down to 60. And he's like, well, that the economics don't work. If I cut this restaurant down to 60 and Trump was like, no, you're not cutting it down to 60. We're going to get you back to 200. We're going to get you back there as fast as we possibly can. And that's the right attitude to have. By the way, the stock market, this is Tuesday morning where we're doing this. The stock market is pricing in something different. We had a really good day on Monday. Futures are open today. Now, I'm not saying we're calling a bottom. I'm not saying this thing can't roll over again. But in the short term, the stock market is identifying something that the mainstream media is not. And I'll yeah. tell you, the stock market has always been smarter than the mainstream. Well, my hamster has been smarter than the mainstream media. But, but the stock market has always been one of the greatest leading indicators. And you scratch your head and go, what the heck is the stock market doing? Why is the stock market down 40% over a flu? Well, the stock market had predicted that the mainstream media would make this thing out to be bigger and better than it is. And then we would shut down industries. The stock market predicted that. I don't know what's going on now, but the stock market seems to be rallying. And I think part of that is this massive stimulus that's going to hit. And as you said, Glenn, it does seem to be, I'm not a big fan of government bailouts, but this is a little different when the government tells you you can't go to work. You know, while the government, you know, does have to step in at some point, but there's a massive amount of money and it is seems to be going to the business sector, the majority of it, unlike other programs that have gone for welfare. There is a a negative that's the extended unemployment benefits. You're going to see a lot of lazy people try to take advantage of this. And that is going to draw this thing out. But you can't deny that trillions of dollars are going to be plopped into the economy right now. And that could have a huge economic stimulus going forward. And maybe the stock market, just maybe the stock market is predicting better days ahead, which it normally does. That's what it does. It's a leading indicator. Yeah, no doubt about it. It uh, you, You're looking at a chart I put up on the screen here that's just showing the last couple of days of hospitalizations in New York. And things have gotten remarkably better as far as a number. of It doesn't look like they're still talking about the apex. But he, he's going to talk about the apex, the apex, the apex. Um, you and know, I add one other thing to that. You want to see this thing basically go to zero. All you would need is for the mainstream media to show this chart and really yeah. talk about it because the, 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 well, we're still closing down. We're the still are overwhelmed with people that don't have this virus. I mean, and again, I know it's a tough flu. I get that. And anybody, I, I pray for anybody that gets it. I understand sure. that, but you cannot overwhelm the system by scaring the daylights out of everybody that feels and eh, just a little bit not right, right? And that's what's happening right now. You go, oh, geez, my stomach's hurting. Oh, my God, I got corona. I got a headache. Oh, my God, I got corona, right? So now the system is overwhelmed with people that don't need to be there. And, of course, the people that really do need help, you know, they're the ones that are struggling to get in. It's a shame. It's just the no. mainstream media. Has, and, of course, this guy, he wants this to go on forever, right? He wants uh, to be a leader. Uh, the only thing I can figure is maybe he does want to default on some of the bonds and stuff, and that way he can start over with a spending spree. You know, on Saturday, Mike, we had a caller call in and say, you know, I'm getting, you know, knocks from my liberal friends, which that's your first mistake. Like, yeah. do yourself a favor. I mean, yeah. if they're willing to listen and you can have a, uh, an actual conversation with them, then by all means, you know, enjoy. But the most I have a few folks like that. I have a few liberal friends that are are willing to have a debate and actually present their side and have a and, and talk about the ideas and, and, and debate on, on policy and things like that and results. Right. But most don't. Most are just like, you're crazy. You're a Trump, whatever. And they just go, you know, whatever. Um, but, you know, when I when the we got a call on Saturday and the guy said, you know, from, I'm getting a lot of of, uh, of questions, my liberal friends about, you know, how come whenever the markets get in trouble, you know, we run the socialism, we run the government bailouts and socialism. And, you know, we had a great answer on Saturday, which is which is the truth. But let me add to it. And I just thought about this now is that it wasn't the business owner's decision to shut down. Right. This right. is this is a. The government has forced businesses to shut down. Right. Okay. It wasn't the restaurant's decision to say, oh, now it's one thing if people just stop going to restaurants because they're doing it on their own, the restaurant fails, yeah. and then we find to bail them out. That's different. That's not yeah. happening here. Mm-hmm. That didn't happen here. The heavy hand of government came in and said, you get to be open, you have to close. You get to be open, you have to close. You get to be open, you have to close. And then you have people like Como and say, oh, we're just going to extend it to the end of, of April. It's just a pause. Yeah. Tell them somebody who's watching their life's work go down right. the toilet 
who's watching their life's work right now circle the drain because they're looking at it going, okay, great. I'm getting a stimulus package. I'm getting some money that covers my payroll, but I've got all these other costs that I can't continue to pay. I've got a mortgage that I may have to pay. I have other, uh, you know, a cost like, you know, uh, the, all the inventory I might be losing, utility expenses, <clears throat> all kinds of expenses that go into running a business like that. It's not as easy just to turn it off and then turn it back off. I really thought that Coma would start this week to talk about opening up like roofers, construction, as we get into yeah. spring. He's not. He's talking about yeah. staying off. You go outside, we'll find you $2,000. He's What's got a different thing? agenda. He's got a different agenda. I'm telling you, there's something up because he can't be, you've got to understand that the economic life, the lifeblood of everything we do is the economy, right? <clears throat> as you've pointed out, there's absolutely sections of this economy that we can start to open up to day, right? I mean, I, I, you know, roofers, okay, stay six feet away, right? You know, what's funny is I'm looking at that picture, Glenn, and his hair looks beautiful. Now mine, I'm so desperate for a haircut. I'm starting to look like a, a you know, a shaggy dog, right? And I'm afraid to give my kids the clippers because I don't know what could end up happening, right? There's a real level of fear there. But this guy, he looks beautiful, right? I can tell looking at his hair, he used, somebody used a number one clipper on him. He's beautiful, right? So how could how could, and by the way, I meant to say this before, uh, I think I should have trademarked social distancing because we were talking about liberals and I've been social distancing from them for years. And now I get no credit, no royalties from it. Nope. But this guy, this guy's hair, there was a number one clipper used on his hair on the sides, right? So, and he didn't, you know, you don't look that beautiful doing it on your own. I'm telling you, you just don't, right? So somebody is cutting his hair. Now, uh, it's either him or he gets to play by a separate set of rules, right? Like his mayor buddy who's strolling through the park right now. He's telling everybody else, you should stay home and work from your house. You should not leave your house. We're going to fine you $2,000 if we catch you out. Oh, you're a child rapist? No oh, problem. We'll let you out. But the yeah. soccer mom, if you get caught strolling down the street within six feet of somebody, you're going to prison. Hmm. Do you want people in prison? Do you not want people in prison? It's really, really confusing. Uh, I, I would think at some point business owners need to stand up and say enough is enough, right? Enough well, is enough. Well, I would think people in general, Mike, it's not just the business owners. It's all these people being harassed. I'm going to go down in a second. Uh, the, the, the litany of articles that we have compiled on, you know, threats from politicians and people being arrested and people being fined. And I mean, come on. But this is getting to be this is. You know, this is a glimpse of what totalitarian government looks like, and I personally am not comfortable with it. I'm just going to say it. I am not comfortable with a government commissar, governor, or any other bureaucrat saying, you can't even go outside and take a walk. That, to me, is outrageous. Let me just play this little clip here, Mike. Number of hospitalizations. This is um, this is the beginning of this press conference yesterday. This is actually... uh, Excuse me, ABC cut this up. So, of course, I'm sure they, they pulled the best clips that they could. Look at that hair. Uh, I want to keep everybody keep in mind. I, I haven't been able to get a haircut in three weeks. So. I'm going to come out with a big afro next week. Um, yeah. Let me just listen to – now, he's going to talk about some really good news here. Does he sound happy? Listen. On the numbers, the number continues to increase. We're up to uh, 8,658 new cases. Uh, overall, we have 130,000 people back tested back. positive. All right, so so they're always focused on total cases, no. total, right? So they add to the total instead of starting out with the positive that cases are going down on a daily basis, right? Yeah. But when he talks to, he gets to that point. Listen to how like things are improving really quickly. <laughs> it's like it's like I, darn it. But we're still going to be able to keep the economy closed for a whole other month still. Oh, yay! Now, yay. I, I, listen, listen, by next week, I'm letting up. I, I think at some point, we're going to have to just say we're open for business. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah. there's like a thousand cases in all of Erie County. There's a million people in Erie County. Right. That means what is that? 0.001%. Yes. Yeah. Maybe, so, what's point zero? So, out of every. I mean, what does that come out to be? I have to do the math. I mean, out of every thousand or ten thousand people you come in contact with, one might actually be infected. I mean, come on. I think the higher probability of being in a car accident on the way to work. Yeah, there actually has been more deaths from that for sure this year. But let me just finish. This. Thousand people. Listen to how when he gets to the positive news. Listen to how excited he is. On our hospital system, thirteen thousand people have been discharged. Number of deaths uh, are up once again. Number of people 
we lost, number of New Yorkers, 4,758, which is up from 159, but which is effectively flat for two days. While none of this is good news, uh, the it is good news. flattening. Flattening is good news. Possible flattening of the curve is uh, better than the increases that we have seen. Total number of hospitalizations are down. The d ICU admissions are down. That should and be the, the daily chart. That should be the chart. Oh. That chart. That chart should stay up for 20 minutes. The <laughs> total new hospitalized. Look at that. See how fast you went past it? Yeah. Total hospitalizations are not just down. They have flawed. Now, yeah. keep in mind, as of last week, let me just pull this up for a second to remind everybody, and I'm pretty sure I tweeted this out, so I'm sure it's in our home profile here somewhere. Um, keep in mind, this is the easiest place I can find it. And where were we supposed to be at this point? Right here. This, this, come on picture. This was last week. No, I'm sorry. This was yesterday. I pulled this yesterday morning. Yesterday yeah. morning. What's the date today? Yesterday morning was the Today's sixth. Yep. It was supposed to peak tomorrow at 25,000 hospital beds. Never going to happen. Right. But even better than this is. We only have about 13,000 people hospitalized. This I took a picture of last Wednesday. So Wednesday of last week, just last Wednesday, they were expecting 75,000. So on Monday, they expected 50,000 this week. By Wednesday, they had increased that to 75,000 beds needed. Today or yesterday, we had 13,000 beds, uh, people in hospitals. There are 13,000 beds available. It yeah. just... We are right now at capacity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, you know, it, it, we didn't it well exceed capacity. We didn't, we're not going to end up using these other facilities that they've set up and all these. It just reminds me a lot. I couldn't find a picture. I looked, I really did. But remember the big snowfall we had in Buffalo? I was there. I got caught in it. I went out yeah. hunting on, uh, on opening day. It was opening weekend of shotgun. I went out Saturday, didn't see anything. Went out Sunday, didn't see anything. Monday, I shot a doe early and then i got back in my stand and i shot a beautiful my second biggest buck ever a nice eight point buck uh about 45 minutes later and it snowed all day and then that night uh we got like three feet of snow we were snowed in all week right and then they started turning to oh my god it's all gonna melt now it's gonna be 50 degrees we're gonna have all this flooding yeah and so i remember polling cars and byron brown and and uh and i think it was governor Como was there as well and they're all standing in front of all these huge boats, right? We brought in all the boats from all over the state. We're going to be ready for the flooding in Western New York. We're going to be here for you. Some of these boats were 35-foot boats that you would run on Lake Ontario. You're going to yeah. run that on Broadway Avenue during a flood? Are you out of your mind? <laughs> all the wrong boats, right? You'd have to have, like, you know, John boats and flats yeah. boats, 12, 14-foot yeah you know, outboard motor boats and whatnot. They've got these giant ships that they put in the harbor of, of, uh, of New York. <laughs> they don't even fit in Lake Erie. <laughs> There's not even a launch. You could put them into the water here, right? Yeah. So they, 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 they line them all up in the warehouse. They get in front of them. We're ready for the flooding. Guess what happened? The flooding never came. It never, never happened. Because it melted slowly and everything went away. And this reminds me a lot of that. We're going to set up this, this, uh, this you know, whatever center they set up or a oh, major yeah. hospital and this and that. And guess Maybe. what? Blaming the Trump administration for shortage after shortage after shortage when they had plenty of goods, plenty of resources, plenty well, of resources. Great news. This is wonderful news. Of course, I'm yeah. going to attribute it to, well, it's because we stayed inside in the social distancing. Sure. That's right. certainly part of it. I think that's definitely helped. Yeah. But this is how these things typically go, right? Yeah. We saw this same thing, you know, in a lot of different viruses in the past. Virus, where we, swine flu. Yeah. Where we didn't quarantine, where we didn't destroy the economy. Yeah. We would have same probably trajectory, maybe a little bit more. Our, our wonderful healthcare system would have been able to handle it, but we wouldn't have also destroyed the economy. We well, still we have 5,000 deaths. That's sad, right? We still have 5,000 deaths in New York. And so that's double the normal month. Just for perspective, folks, in a normal month in New York City, you can expect that many deaths, okay? Yes. About three to 400 people a day die in New York City every right. single day. Some yeah. are murdered. Most just die of natural causes. Car accidents, heart people, attacks. There's just yep. a lot of people in New York. There's millions and millions of people there. It's the biggest city yep. in the country. 
happen, right? Yeah. Uh, so is it sad? Of course, every loss of life is tragic, you know, whether they're 89 years old or, or, or 39 years old, everything is tragic, right? It's tragic, you know, when that 89 year old grandfather is your grandfather or your father or your parent. Yeah. Of course, it's going to be every death is tragic. Everybody has loved ones. Nobody's minimizing that. But you're at the same time, you know, that's going to happen anyways. You don't need to also completely obliterate the economy. You know? I, would like, I would like to get some uh, a psychologist on to talk about and somebody that can predict what the uh, depression, anxiety, and suicide rates will be following this, right? Well, we had one this Especially week. Especially if you got it, Andrew and his, and his brother who want to continue to keep this thing shut down for the next, uh, you know, 60 days or something like that, right? If you don't get people back to work, the amount of suicides and depression and anxiety that people that die of anxiety over the next few years will make this look like nothing. It'll make it look like nothing. We you already have suicides. Too many people have put their lives work. I mean, not even just business owners, as you pointed out before, how many people have been committed to helping grow a business? And for the first time, they find themselves out of work, right? Uh, how many people are sitting at home going, oh my gosh, I have spent the last 20 years helping try to build this company and I'm not sure those doors are going to open. I can't believe this. I don't know what I'm going to do, right? I mean, this was just handled so poorly. You know, this should have been handled on a New York City level. We should have been very aggressive in New York City. We should have been very aggressive in the hot spots like Los Angeles. We should have told people have compromised immune systems, stay at home. We could have been very selective. We could have said, look, at if you're a restaurant, we're going to put you, uh, you know, uh, we're going to shut you down for a little bit. But we are going to step up in a powerful way to make sure we, you know, give you the resources to be able to come out of this. But look, at if you're running a car wash and the people are going through it sitting in their car, I think you can press the button and, and get people through. If you're cutting lawns, I think you'd be okay to cut a lawn on a lawnmower all on your own, right, and pull some weeds out in the front. If you're putting a roof on a house. Put two ladders up, one on one side and one on the other. I think you can still do that. Uh, it was funny. I was talking to somebody the other day, and uh, I won't mention his name, but he's really, really in great shape. And I said, oh, my gosh, you must be going nuts without a gym. He goes, yeah, now nah, all the guys from the gym, we all get together and work out together anyways. We're just doing it. One, one guy's got a, a gym in his house. He's set up in his garage. And he was nice enough to allow us to all to use it. So we're all getting together. So let me get this straight. So we put it basically trying to put the gym out of the business. Yeah, you're all getting together anyways at somebody's house. It makes a ton of sense to me. I mean, come on. The right. point of this is to not belittle the virus, but to use our freaking brains, right? right? These people are getting together anyways. Why destroy the economy, right? And I, what I love is, you know, we're saying this, you know, Andrews go, well, look, it's just a temporary lift. But then on the other side of his mouth, he says, we will never be the same, and this thing's going to last forever. And by the way, when we do go back, you're going to have to stay away from each other. They're talking about sending the kids to school with masks on. Like, come on, just stop, just stop. If you've got a compromised immune system, if you're older, let this thing play itself out. Put the resources together to help those people, but put no, people no. back to work. Enough is enough. Mind you, these are this is great news, right? This is great news here. Incredible news. I want to play a little more. Listen to how, like, gee, this is so bad. This Total number right. of hospitalizations are down, the ICU admissions are down, and the daily intubations are down. Those are all good signs, and again, would suggest a possible flattening of the curve. The number of discharges is down, but that reflects the overall reduction in the numbers. Big question that we're looking at now is what, what is the curve? And we've been talking about cases increase, increase, increase until they don't. When they stop increasing, then what happens? And the projection models have a number of alternatives. Uh, some suggest. This, this, guy, this, says, this wow. is another one of the Andrew Cuomo geniuses. Where, where's the curve? I don't know. Rocket scientist. I mean, maybe when it starts to go down, I just thinking like. Can we go oh, back to this that might actually That might actually trump him saying, you know what? We had hospitals that were full, and I came up with the idea of shifting people to the ones that were empty. No shit. That's genius. I don't know. If you're drawing the line here, <laughs> let's see. Where's the curve? Nobody knows. Really? I don't know. This yeah. looks like. Pretty obvious to me. I, I don't know. <laughs> you believe, Andrew, you draw the line. Down. You just went through this, Andrew. You right. just talked about where the curve was, you genius. Right. right. 
This was great, though. We got to send him back to the third plateau. grade. I think in I think in the third grade we learned this stuff. What do you mean plateau? It's not. Pl- it just dropped off a cliff. Right. You you see. Right. Then what happens? And the projection models have a number of alternatives. Uh, some suggest basically the curve goes up and then drops precipitously. Some suggest there's a slight pause at the top. Some suggest there's a longer pause at the top, which is effectively a plateau uh, effect. <laughs> hey, come on. Come on. Oh, my God. What a waste of airtime. <laughs> I mean, you put eyes on it as Casper the Ghost here. I mean, could, seriously. It could go up, could go sideways. Give me a break. Why don't you just admit to people? Well, you know what the incline looks like. We've already right. had that. Like, right. just all that, you genius. I mean. Right. Again, the straight up. Straight down. We said this, by the way. You can go back to the pot you weeks ago. The projections won't even be close. No. Won't even be close. Even close. It, these numbers will not even be near, near, no. anywhere in the country what they were talking about. And this and thing will. Wouldn't, have, been, wouldn't have been here either yeah. way. Wouldn't yeah. have mattered. I mean, maybe we would have had a little bit more if we would not have social distance. But I, I told know. you said early on, they're going to claim all the credit for, see, it worked. See, yeah. it worked. No they what. may have made it worse. They may have made it worse. Hey, let's get everybody to lay on top of each other in a little uh, yeah. in a, in a little room for two yeah. weeks, three weeks, right? They go may have on. made it worse. Yeah, right? go home and talk yourself in with grandma. That makes sense. That's right. That's right. That's exactly what happened, by the way. And, and you know, people are still seeing their moms and dads are still driving down the street to do that, right? So- you know, if 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 it was as dangerous as they would have said, the Amazon package delivery guy would have gotten the whole country sick. That's right. It wouldn't have mattered. I'll play a little more of this. And straight down precipitous drop, which is the peak effect. No one can tell you uh, which will occur. Uh, they say any one of the three options. You study other countries. Right. I I, I don't. I mean, it what looks. Doing? Again, I'm going to go back to this. It would look to me that this would pretty much tell you what it's going to look like. It's yep. dropping off substantially. Yep. And by the way, that will accelerate on the, on the downside. The, mo- the less this becomes mainstream media, the less people will go get tested for everything. You know, there's people that do need help. And I'm, I'm very sympathetic to those people. The people that, are, that, that this thing has really hit the hardest, yeah. they need our help. There's plenty of people that don't, that, you know, are fine, right? And the more you'll see these people that, uh, that you know, the mainstream media and he starts to go away, all of a sudden you'll see poosh, that thing will go right down. Uh, it will, uh, we got to play, Glenn, the video of uh, him and his brother, though. They had a love fest together of each other. Where Absolutely. Going Look back at and, forth. and we have to play that before this is over. I had never seen it. I love you, my little brother. My, this is this is my little brother. Uh, like, what is he eight? What is he's, oh. he's, he's an adult? Little Fredo. Yeah. Um, let me play this one more clip here, and then we'll, we can move on to. Uh, I, I want to talk just for a second about, you know, what what an exercise and how freely the American public has been willing to completely just throw their rights right in the toilet. Right? Yeah. Oh, you mean you're going to take away my right of free assembly? No problem. Let's just shred the First Amendment. Oh. Yeah. In Chicago and, and New Orleans, you're going to confiscate my firearms and you're going to waive my the, 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 my right to my Second Amendment. Oh, right. we'll just you shred that amendment. No problem. Further than that, you know, Como said this week, a New Jersey governor actually passed laws this week that allowed state police to commandeer private supplies from private businesses or homes if they deemed it necessary. So if you had a stockpile of N95 masks, let's say, because you were a veterinarian, they could basically come into your 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 uh, your, your office and, and take whatever they wanted, right? I don't know. That seems to be a violation of a couple other amendments as well. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. we're, every time we're gonna have a crisis, folks, and I know it's different. It's different. It's a pandemic. It's saving people. Okay. Well, should we? I don't know. When we were talking about terrorists and waterboarding them and dripping water on their face, it was like, oh my god, we can't do that. But right. in this country, apparently we can, right? So cruel and unusual punishments now okay? Because if we're going to go start waiving amendments, let's just shred the Eighth Amendment. Why not? You don't need that, right? I mean, how about we don't need to do any of that? The private sector stepped up in a huge way, right? In Erie County, you had all kinds of companies stepping up saying, we can change our manufacturing to make these masks right away, right? Didn't need to do any of that. 
Didn't three M came out. No, three M. Uh, Trump announced yesterday he signed a deal with three M to produce fifty million masks a month. Yeah. Now remember, last week we talked about we did on the podcast. Remember, Coma was hoarding the masks, right? We showed and the you ventilators the- and the ventilators. Don't forget about the ventilators. If you missed last week's podcast, you must go watch that. We showed you a video last week of Andrew Como being asked. We have people in the hospital saying they need masks or out of supplies. You're saying that, and Trump called you out saying we're shipping 300,000 masks where before they were only using 20. Where are they going? We're stockpiling them. Remember that? We showed you in his own words, him saying, we're stockpiling them. We told you last week. The reason for that is because these liberals on the left who have never run a business, who have never been in the private sector, have no understanding of the free market and have no confidence in it whatsoever that the free market has the ability to change uh, manufacturing and shed, retool their what they're doing and easily deliver the supplies that are needed. 50 million new masks a month is way more than we're going to need probably across this country. And that's just one supplier. That's just 3M. I want you to think about that. So last week we did the podcast, we were criticizing him about stockpiling goods, right? And and the reason we said it is because you don't know where this virus is going to go and you help the people that need the help right now, right? Well, damn it. How right were we? Because this week the numbers went way down. And so there's so many people that apparently were not helped last week because he was stockpiling all the goods for what? Exactly what Mike and Glenn said last week. Right. There is a so, high probability that this thing goes way down, as in other cases, and you don't say, oh, well, we have the stuff down the street in a warehouse. We're just going to hold that for other people next week. You help the people right now. You attack the problem at the center, at the core. Man, were we right. Dead right. Because there was a lot of people probably that struggled last week that shouldn't have done that. They shouldn't have done that. It's right. amazing, though. There was one actual reporter that well, you know. Although I'm sure these press conferences are all Andrew and his buddies. There, there's nobody in there that's going to ask him tough questions. I assure you, everybody in that room there has been vetted 15 times over to not ask any tough questions. Right? I mean, it, how could you not? Like when he's showing these little uh, graphs that look like a, a three-year-old put them together. Right? right. So that room has been vetted. That everybody in that room is giving him softballs. If they don't, they won't be invited back again for sure. But, but we played it last week, and we're stockpiling these. Trump called them out on it. He yep. said, we, so listen, so, so doctors and nurses in New York City, I know mo- a lot of you are liberal. Before you point the finger at Trump, before ABC News or NBC or CBS or anybody else says it's Trump's fault for not delivering, keep in mind, it was Andrew that was stockpiling face masks, face masks while Trump was out there securing additional supply. Which, by the way, is coming, right? We had Mike Lindell at the White House press conference last week talking about how my pillow has been uh, shifting gears and delivering a million masks themselves. I mean, the, the private sector has gone out and secured millions and millions. The only case where Trump had to actually use the powers of the government based on, I can't think of the name of the act, but the War Powers Act that gives them the opportunity to force or, or, the, or the power to force a company to do it was with GM. Because yeah. sadly, the union decided that this would be a good time to negotiate for better pricing on, on respirators. Not the time, guys. Don't I mean, we still own them, by the way. Don't we still uh, own them? But it, look, at Trump said, listen, I'm sorry. We tried to negotiate. I gave you 24 hours, 48 hours. You didn't do it. Now I'm just going to put my foot down and I'm going to use my powers of uh, a to say, start making them. And he did. And he didn't yeah. want to, but he did. He had to do it in that case. You know, unfortunately, it would have been nice if they would have just played ball, but that's okay. I mean, they have a right not to, right? I mean, they're a business too, and, and they have to decide what's right for them. Of course, that's why we have that the War Powers Act that can force them. Let me play this last clip, and then we'll go to the Love Fest, and I got some other things to play. We got to talk about Biden too. Biden, by the way, and this is the plan, folks. When you hear Como, I'm going to play this clip for a second. They want you indoors. Bill Gates is talking about we may never be able to get back into group concerts or big events again. What they want is they want a mail-in uh, ad spend campaign between. Can you, can you imagine the abuse out of that? Can Only- you imagine the abuse out of that? And for those of you on the left that say, oh, it's the Republicans. No, it's not. 90% of the time, it is a Democrat party that is trying to steal elections. And Absolutely. they've done Time and time again, they did it for Obama. I don't think Obama actually won that second election. You know, there's no 120 percent of the precinct voted in uh, Philadelphia. I mean, give me a break, right? 100 percent of that was for Obama. Now, yeah. one guy yeah. pulled yeah. the wrong lever. Now, yeah. one right. Now, Not one, one person said, "Wait a minute, Obama, really?" The first four years of him, my life didn't get any better. I'm just going to vote out of. I'm mad. I, yeah, right. doesn't yeah. make it. 
Yeah. Right? Then this would be so ridiculously abused, right? So we're not going to get together all by the way until Biden wins. Then I'll have this nice big celebration rally in uh, in a stadium, and we'll all get back together, and life will be back to normal. You know? exactly. That's 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 the goal. Yes. Let me play the rest of this clip. You'll love this part here. This is great. Kim Como is going to tell us what we can and cannot do. Uh, Hong Kong has made that mistake. South Korea has made that mistake. Uh, and we're not going to make that mistake. The weather is turning. People have been locked up. We've been talking about cabin fever. Uh, now it's a nice day. I'm going to get out. I'm going to go take a walk. Now is not the time to do that. No. And no. in Frank- force New York. Not go outside and take a walk on your own. Right. They right. have closed down everything. Now, this is where somebody sent me a, a, an email or a tweet or something. They said, are they trying to just specifically do things to cause more pain? I said, yes, yes they are. Yes. That's why they closed yes. things like the boat launches in Florida. Why? Right. why? We're not all sitting together hugging yeah. each other at the boat no, launch. No, let me get this straight. So they closed the boat launch. So it's okay for me to sit on top of my family if I own an 800-square-foot apartment. That's all for that. That's... That's fine, but I can't go out in the boat with them. Or I can't go for a walk in New York City. Now, keep in mind, this is a great example of the elitist versus everybody else, right? Our gyms, not that I go to a gym, but our gyms are all closed, right? Yet yep. the Supreme Court Ginsburg, like, you know, the uh, 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 Ruth Bader Ginsburg was spotted working out of the congressional gym. The congressional gym is still open. Why? Yeah. Right. Andrew wants to work yeah. out. He'll go downstairs and get on the elliptical in the, in the gym oh. in the, in the yeah. easy the Blasio, no problem. Yeah. The Blasio was spotted with his wife, the the uh, you know Charlene or whatever her name is, that uh, you know yeah. built a billion and a half dollars from the taxpayers in New York City from a walk uh, in the park. A, yeah, strolling in Central Park. You not can't allowed. go to Central Park. You're not allowed. You well, can't. He's got now the whole all empty. Park. Now they got the parks for themselves. <laughs> right. so it's, it's not good for you, but yeah. the, the elites are still okay. Ruth Bader Ginsburg, at, at, at 116 years old, is still fine to go use the congressional gym or the or the personal uh, uh, gym or whatever. But you can't, right? Uh, why? Why? Why is it okay for? Look, I, here's what I want to say. You want to pause the economy for another month? Then all you politicians like Governor Cuomo, Poland cars, Byron, Byron Brown, although Byron Brown, I, I kind of like, he's growing on me. He's, he's been awfully quiet. He's, anyway, but um, you stop taking paychecks. Stop. Right. Stop, right? All you people criticizing, it's just a month. It's just a pause. All you folks that are saying, we, we got to stay inside, don't go outside, are, you're all still receiving paychecks, okay? Yep. Yeah. If you work for the government, you're a school teacher, God bless you, but you're all receiving paychecks, okay? The rest of us are not receiving paychecks. They should halt those paychecks for a month. We would see this disease yeah, go away month. within all seconds. That's all awesome. media, awesome. Everybody at CNN, your paychecks get, get halted until the restaurants are open. You would see this thing go away within five days. Yep. Yep. We'd be <laughs> open on Monday. We'd be open yep. in a week. Yep. So now he's telling you you can't go outside. I mean, listen to this. It's just ridiculousness. Well, ridiculous. unless, by the way, you're a child rapist because they're letting him out of prison. And my understanding is if you get out of prison and go home, you've got to go outside. So that's OK. Those people are going to obey the rules. They've just they've got a good solid track record of that. You, soccer mom, you don't. Yeah, the child rapist. That's, you know, let's put, put stock in him. I've been talking about cabin fever. Uh, now it's a nice day. I'm going to get out. I'm going to go take a walk. Now is not the time to do that. And frankly, there has been a laxness uh, on social distancing, especially over this past weekend, that is just wholly unacceptable. Uh, I want local governments to enforce the social distancing rules. The local governments are charged with enforcement. I want them to enforce them. And I want to be, frankly, more aggressive on the enforcement because all the anecdotes. When I hear stuff like this, it yep. makes me love for a very close walk with somebody. I, honest yeah. to God, I yeah. look at. I, I'm in. I, I'm. I. You know. I share the same bedroom with my wife. I think that most people do. It's normal, right? I'm yeah. in the same house. If I'm out walking, I'm taking a walk around my block with my wife holding her hand. Are you going to pull up and stop me? <laughs> right. I'm scary at that. Think about how, scary that is. And how willing the American people were to just go, oh, no problem. And what if we actually have some kind of a terror? Can you imagine terror? You two right there. You two, separate. Six feet. You're within six. You two, I'm going to find you. Are you out of your mind? This right. is this is insanity, Mike. This yeah. has got to be out of control. And yeah. I, for 
one who had enough. Look at, let me just go through some of these things, okay? Some of this stuff is absolutely outrageous. Let's just roll through a few headlines, shall we? Uh, let's see here. Uh, Ohio prosecutor to stay at home violators. You can sit there and kill yourself in jail. That's what he's saying. You go out, and we will pick you up and you will sit in jail. What happened to the right to a speedy trial? What happened uh, to that? Oh, but you could, so if you leave your house, the Ohio prosecutor is saying, I'm going to pick you up and I'm going to throw you in jail. Uh, it, it can talk how about the you. LA one? The LA one saying blow in your neighbors. That's oh, socialism 101 right there. That is that is old school Cuba right there. Absolutely. Russia and Cuba. In Kentucky, they're affixing people with ankle monitors so they can track a thing. <laughs> He's out of his house. <laughs> Honest to God. State police in Pennsylvania arrested a woman for going uh, for going for a drive. I mean, come on. A you York can't go for a drive now. So what does it happen? The flu, the a flu goes through the windows and through the windshield and out into the air. Why does that work? Like, uh, or was this lady going around town spitting out of her window? I don't know. Outrageous. A 19-year-old woman was given a non-traffic citation for allegedly going for a drive, according to uh, Penn Live. That State is police. beyond crazy. And the fact that people are just going, oh, well, we got to comply. We got to comply over the flu is ridiculous. Joke. Outrageous to me. What else we got? Oh, this one's the best. Let's hear what the uh, the really wonderful San Diego sheriff has to say. This week, by the way, they arrested somebody who was out paddleboarding on the ocean by himself. The Coast Guard or, or the lifeguards were yelling to him to get off the water. He's out there by himself. He was paddling around, uh, I guess, to either side of the of the uh, of the pier to, to not comply. And they sent out a boat to arrest him and they gave him a thousand dollar fine. What in the hell have we come to? Can what he, is, I wonder if he can if, can he scoot them back for social distancing because they got in his in his path right I would think they got within six feet of himself paddleboarding. Look at if I want to go out and spend time with somebody else and we want to get together within six feet, it is my right to do that. It's not yeah. your right to say you can't do that. We have a freedom of assembly in the First Amendment. I got I got I to remind you, and that's not freedom of assembly over Zoomer by phone call. If I want to get together and hold a group, a, a, a party, or whatever I want to do, I have every constitutional right to do that. Now, I would, I'm not going to do that. We're playing ball to try to avoid. But when you start saying, "If I, I'm the instructing the local sheriff and local police officer," I'm arresting you or, if you go outside for social distancing. Screw yeah. you! Don't yeah. you have more important things to do? In all seriousness, and I'm yeah. sure the police officers are probably rolling their eyes, going. Yes, Glenn, we don't, we're not going to enforce oh, it. Oh, yeah, for sure they are. For they sure they are. Yeah. They did in Pennsylvania. State uh, I could see it working in Penn, in California, right? There's enough idiots out there, and especially in New York City. But, you know, I, I, I'm shocked that that's going to work in, you know, the deep south, like, uh, you know, the Kentucky. Yeah. Right? Listen to this one. This one, this lady's so compassionate. She's the she's the the, uh, uh, the sheriff, I guess, or the prosecutor, whatever, for, it looks like the sheriff, I guess, for San Diego County. So, I mean, by the way, great job. We go out there, by the way, and uh, the socialism has done a wonderful bang up job out there. So right. you got you got California with the Uber rich and then you've got uh, Tent City and you want to walk, you want to talk about infections. You want to talk about getting sick. There's heroin needles in the streets. Maybe they should worry about that. Jesus. Over the past couple weeks, our deputies have gone out on foot and provided physical copies of the public health order as well as the executive order to educate our community members and businesses. And now we've gotten to the point that we've had to escalate and now we're doing enforcement. A large group of our deputies and detectives did go out and conduct enforcement for those who are violating the order. These were not recommendations that came down. How close were those two people? I'm sorry, back up just a second here. I, I mean, it would seem to me that these, no offense to the San Diego Sheriff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, good sirs here. They're uh, touching shoulder, they're touching hair. <laughs> if Collins here and his buddy would maybe decide that they want to pick different uh, car hoods to write the tickets on. I got to be honest with you. If I'm a San Diego oh, County Sheriff, I'm quitting. I'm saying, you know what? I'm not doing this. I'm not could, could doing they be closer, though, seriously? Right. They, why don't you right. sit on his lap while you're at it? That's not six. Come on. <laughs> These were not recommendations that came down. These were actual orders that our deputies have gotten to the point now to where we will we will enforce and we're going to continue to be doing enforcement. And it's it's not that we're trying to be mean or, or exert unnecessary authority. 
it's we're dealing with the crisis at this point. And we're not trying to be mean or, or exert sure. unnecessary authority. I think that is exerting it's unnecessary authority. I'm going to lock you up in prison for an indefinite amount of time, but don't worry. It's just because of this crisis. I'm going to take you and I'm going to hang you by your ankles from the overpass on I-95, but don't worry. It's just, just because worry. we have a crisis. Let's just fine. spend It'll all of our down. lives during a crisis, shall we? Let's just spend our freedom of speech. Let's It'll just spend down. our Second Amendment to protect ourselves. I don't know. I was alive during the L.A. riots. You were around during the L.A. riots. I was in college at the time. I remember watching the L.A. riots. If yep. I recall correctly, the police fled the city. They <laughs> left to burn. Those that were armed were able to protect themselves and their businesses. Those that weren't got their businesses burnt to the ground, okay? In the same that breath, we're letting, we're letting prisoners out because we don't want them to get the coronavirus. You know, who gives a crap if they get uh, the corona, right? Lock the, lock the jail cell, throw the food underneath the cell, and uh, call it a day, right? Let them sit there for two, three weeks. They'll clean that prison out faster than any place. Tell me you don't need your firearm when uh, when they're releasing criminals from jail. Tell me you don't need your yeah. firearm when they're releasing child rapists from jail, right? Yeah. It's amazing to me. They it's left the weed shops open, though. The weed shops are all open there. That's a necessity. That's an essential business. And uh, so they're letting child rapists out, but the weed shops are open. That's fine. We're not trying to exert any undue authority, but this is a crisis. So during every crisis, what you're saying is if it's a crisis, we're allowed to do whatever we want and suspend whatever constitutional rights you have. Is that what you're They're saying? They're allowing them. They're allowing them. Everybody's back to them, no problem. Uh, this is going to change pretty quick here. I, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I think you're going to start to see some challenges. I think there's a bigger agenda in New York, though. I think, uh, oh, yeah. I think yeah. Andrew's realized he's rung up the bill pretty big, and this is an opportunity for him to sort of default on some of that stuff. And we want compliance from everybody because this is lives that we're trying to save. The quicker we can shut down this, this spread and this pandemic, the quicker that we can all get back to a normal life. I do want to assure everyone that we serve at the North Coastal Command that the services that our deputies are providing has actually improved, it's increased. We have more deputies that are out in the field right now than we have ever had. So please continue to call if you need our services. We have an abundance of help for you. Great, but don't leave your house or we will arrest you. Don't think about that. They call us if you need our services, which means call us if you see somebody out walking within six feet of each other. <laughs> please tell on your neighbors. Unbelievable. What else we got? Yeah. Uh, talked about that one. We just played that one. There was a San Diego one. Um, actually, this is a different, completely different thing we can play in a second. This is, uh, this, by the way, this is a totally off topic, but I'm going to play it anyways because I'll forget about it otherwise. You probably haven't seen this yet, Mike. Nobody has, I bet. Um, they haven't talked about this anywhere in the mainstream media, right? You would think this would be pretty big news, wouldn't you? This is amazing to me. And oh, yet this I have China. This is the guy who got arrested at Harvard. Yeah. We're here today to announce three separate cases highlighting the ongoing threat posed by Chinese economic espionage and research theft in the United States. Federal investigators at the Lexington home of 60-year-old Dr. Charles Lieber today, moments after his arrest at his Harvard office. The complaint alleges that Dr. Lieber signed a contract with the Chinese university in Wuhan and was paid up to $50,000 per month plus up to $158,000 in living expenses. The chair of Harvard's chemistry department, he also allegedly received more than $1.5 million to set up a research lab in China, all while working at Harvard and receiving multiple research grants from the U.S. Department of Defense and National Institutes of Health. People are scum. You people that work in these universities, you high liberal professors that are working with the communist governments. This guy was a chemist, just a co-chair of the department at Harvard. Right. Right. And he was paid like Joe Biden's son for working with the a laboratory in Wuhan, China. Go, go, go figure. Huh? Of the virus or not or whatever. This, by the way, was part of a larger sting. Where professor How is that a cop story in every mainstream media outlet? Right? That's right? just daylight people, right? right? They just bury the story, bury, oh, he's a Harvard guy. Must not have done anything wrong, right? This was, he's just smart. Just Harvard, 
This was MIT and a number of universities. They rounded up a handful, about a half a dozen college professors at all of these Ivy League liberal institutions, and they were all working with China. They were all selling sequels or research. This guy was on the Chinese payroll and helped the University of China set up their chemical biology research department. Now, again, I'm not a scientist, but I'm guessing that biology and chemistry and all this stuff probably has something to do with research and viruses and things like that. Just so happen to also be in Wuhan. I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if you have to reptize that or not, but all I know is this guy needs to rot in a prison cell yep. for, yep. for a and long I, time. And it should be front page news in every publication across the country. You wouldn't, you can't find it anywhere. How in the world does the mainstream media not, uh, and by the way, you know, some good investigative reporting now to go back and, and do the, you know, trail of where exactly that all ended up, right? That should be on every major news outlet every night until we found out and unraveled that whole mess. No doubt. All right, I got a couple of things to play here, News Club. Uh, by the way, we do manage money for a living, folks. If you want our help, you need our help, use us as a resource. A lot of volatility out there. You know, our portfolios, we don't believe in timing the market. What we do believe in making small, subtle adjustments. We rebalanced our portfolios at the end of the last year, took some profits out of the stock market. Our models triggered a rebalance in uh, around Dow 18,005, 19,000. So we were able to take some of the profits from the 2019 and move them back into the market. And so, you know, those types of subtle adjustments will allow you to be able to weather some of these storms and really benefit from it, believe it or not, as the economy starts to turn the other way. Markets as of this podcast are, you know, seem to have found at least a temporary bottom. We're about, you know, 5,000 points away or from uh, from that bottom now, 4,000 4, something. So we're, we're really seeing some, uh, hopefully, some pre-anticipation of some better days. And, uh, you know, a lot of this is not economic news right now. Nobody's looking at the economic numbers and saying, hey, these numbers are great. We're looking at where we think the economy is going to be a year from now, two years from now, five years from now. And uh, the focus will remain on when we can go back to work. I think the proactive words out of Donald's Trump mouth over the last few days, continuing to say it's all about the economy and we need to open this thing, has really, really started to give a little bit of confidence back to Wall Street that this isn't going to be a long term deal. And uh, Trump was right. You know, the, the cure cannot be worse than the problem. He continues to say that. And he needs to uh, continue to push this thing forward to selectively start to immediately open up some sectors of this economy. There's places in this country that don't even know, uh, you know, what this what this virus is all about. Zero cases. Let them selectively start to go back to work. And yeah. uh, that's the key. And I think you're starting to see the stock market price set in. Yeah, I do think, though, you're going to see a flood of the economic news that comes out, and it's going to be a lot more damaging than people think. Oh, it's bad. It's bad. When that happens, you're going to see the next leg down. That probably retests that low. But I think once we get that bad news out, I think we can we can deal with it, and then we can move on from there. But I think that's still yet coming. I mean, when you start talking about gov- when people like Governor Cuomo and other, other politicians start talking about, well, it's just a pause. Just a pause. Yeah. Just a pause. Just pause it for a second. Yeah. Let me just ask you this. How about what if you paused your heart? How long would you pause your heart for before you would do serious problems? Now, we talked about this a little bit on the radio show and on the the podcast last week. You can pause your heart, right? They do that for certain procedures. They will stop your heart and then restart it again for certain procedures that they do. But they can only do it for like a minute, right? After about a minute or two, you start to to die, right? Your body starts to die. And the economy is no different, right? The, The money and the economic activity is like the blood in the system. It's the blood of the of the economy in the country. Yep. Uh, so what we have done is we have stopped the heart of the country. We have stopped the economic heart of the country. And it's you can only keep that stopped for so long. Every week that goes by while this is stopped, you're losing parts of your body. You're losing yep. parts of the economy are dying off and are not going to return, right? I hope I'm wrong. But this could only go on for so long. If we start to get into May and then June, we are going to be looking at a Great Depression, right? Yeah. The 100-year event, right? The Great Depression was a long 10-year brutal slog. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots and that's, lots. That's what this would turn into if it gets into May this and June. Mike, there's yeah. food lines. I mean, I, I think I posted this probably. Yeah, I saw that. This picture was of Florida, right? This picture was Florida. There's food lines, 
in, in Pennsylvania, there's food lines in Florida. I mean, you're seeing these huge lines of, of uh, system, even even the unemployment, right? There's so many people that have not been able to even sign up for unemployment. And unfortunately, and this is, you know, we've been talking about this for decades. You know, the education, financial education has been really crummy, right? We teach these kids how to learn Spanish and French, but not how to balance a checkbook or how to keep enough cash reserves. You have so many folks in this country living paycheck to paycheck. And although they're qualifying for unemployment, most of them can't sign up for it now. They're right. just they're jammed, right? So, you know, yeah, they want it, but it's not there and they don't have a safety net, right? So got to open this thing up sooner rather than later. If they do that, with the amount of cash that's been infused into the system, you know, we can we can save this thing. I will say, though, I think it's going to be uh, longer than people think. There's too many people that are already, I've seen it already, they're already abusing it. Oh, are you, what do you mean? Tell me I can go on unemployment for how long? Oh, okay. I'll just do that, and then I'll worry about my job on the other side, right? Uh, that's going to, that's going to, you know, that's going to absolutely prolong the damage of this mess for sure. But the bigger part is, okay, well, I owed rent. I can't pay it. Uh, the bank doesn't, you know, the bank is calling. Wait a minute. You know, my landlord is calling. The landlord's saying, look, it, I'd like to forgive you on the rent, but I owe the bank and the bank is not forgiving me, blah, blah, blah. And the mess goes on. This is what you just mentioned, Mike, is New York unemployment claims skyrocket. Applying for benefits has become a maddening full-time job. And some of these folks... Um, you know, they called like 28 times, you know, a thousand times they're trying to dial two different numbers, you know, they're trying to get through. Um, it's just, you know, it's amazing. Uh, Aiken Walker called the New York State Department of Labor 259 times on Tuesday, hoping to file for unemployment claims. In one instance, he reached a representative, but the government worker couldn't hear Walker and soon hung up the phone. Like, oh, how demoralizing is that? It's like trying to call a radio station to win a contest. Like, oh, you're number eight. Oh, <laughs> Turn it off. I mean, it's just... Oh man, these these states are nowhere near ready to take this influx. We've had 10 million people. Last week, the jobless claims were over 6 million on top of the previous week that was over 3 million. So in just a span of two weeks, 10 million people have filed for uh, unemployment. Mm -hmm. This week, you're going to see another 5 to 10 million likely start to uh, apply. And these systems are overloaded. Now, the government's giving everybody 1,200 bucks plus 500 bucks a kid. So that's going to help a little bit for a week or two. Unemployment claims have to kick in, and then you're absolutely right. When some of these businesses come back, right? When the restaurant comes back, you got all. You basically what the government did is they said, okay, for those unemployment claims, we're going to give you an extra six fifty just to sit home for the next like two months or three months. Yeah. Or this. There's going to be a lot of people that go. Let's see, I was making five hundred a week before working. Now you're going to pay me six fifty not to work. See you in August, right? Uh, and I, that could happen. I think some of these businesses are going to struggle to actually bring enough people back. You well, you, you got, and you also have the Democrats saying it's not going to be normal. So don't go back to normal and think you're just going to go out to a restaurant and sit down with people. Don't you dare. Right. I will say, though, Donald Trump talked about allowing us to be able to write off as business owners entertainment expenses. Yeah, That's I a big agree. deal. That's a big deal. Now, I'm not sure the Democrats have the brains to actually push that through. But that is something that that's the kind of thinking that would allow us to get out the other side. It's really too bad because what they should also be doing is giving a personal income tax break to everybody right now. Set the rates very similar to the corporate rates, you know, where we have a top tax bracket of 20, 25%. Allow people to keep some of their own money. And my guess is if they actually did that, um, you'd start to see economic activity go back to four or 5%. And we'd actually be able to clean up some of this mess. So they'd bring in a record amount of money, right? But we just uh, slash the size of government. We just increased the size of government by $2 trillion. Got to do both. Yeah, got to do both. Increased it by another $2 trillion. We're going to come out of this crisis over $25 trillion in debt. How about now is a great time to eliminate the Department right. of Education, to eliminate yeah. the Department of Energy? Let those decisions go back to the states. Let the educational decision be a state level decision, right? Yeah. There are some common things that you can recommend, but these are things that the federal government can get out of the business of. Let's end on this note, Mike. And I, I almost feel bad for this guy. You know, somebody look, Jill Biden needs to step in here and say, Joe, it's it's it, it's time, buddy. It, yeah. it should, I, I, the, how they continue to let this guy. How, how, how is your family? I would hope God, I hope to God, if I have a stroke or whatever happened to, to Joe someday, and I'm out there just babbling like an idiot, I would hope my wife and my family and maybe my daughters would pull me aside and say, dad, husband, 
it's you're just you're not what well, you think. You think are. about this, Glenn. He can't run a Zoom meeting. How is he going to run the country? Listen to this here. He can't run a Zoom meeting. He wanted off screen. We played that last. And week. by the way, you're absolutely right. They don't want any uh, any kind of. Uh, they don't want him in any debates. They don't. Want, they want to prolong this thing as long as possible, so he doesn't have to go up against Trump head to head. If they can eliminate the Trump rallies, if they can eliminate any sort of get-togethers, if they can eliminate voting at the ballot box and collect ballots by allowing everyone to mail them in, they actually have a shot. If they can make this an ad campaign, the spend campaign, and just make Biden look really good at these campaign ads, that's the only shot they have. Because the more stuff like this that they do, they get – I can't believe they're still doing stuff like this. I, I think Trump's walking in anyways, but if they oh, start no. to – if they're able to start to open up the economy within the next two or three weeks with yeah. the massive stimulus that went in and you start to see a recovery in the stock market, this could be the biggest beating ever. It I'm could make saying. the Reagan-Carter deal look, look, look small. It'll be just like this. I got a rubber band right here. It, right yep. now, we're doing this, right? We're doing this right now. We're pulling this back, right? Yep. A slingshot forward if we can actually – you know, come back, but allow it we, to let go. <laughs> well, if we keep pulling, it's going to break, yeah. right? It breaks. Yeah. There is no spring break once this thing breaks. I think that's yeah. important to understand. We're here right now. We're at the we're at breaking point, right? We can snap back very quickly with all the stimulus, but if we keep pulling and we go into May and we go into June, this thing's going to snap, and yeah. we're not going to have a, a bounce back recovery. We're going to have to rebuild our our economy. But yeah. this twenty one second clip, he literally says. Nothing but gibberish. This is yeah. 20 seconds of absolute gibberish. It's a case where we cannot let this, we've never allowed any crisis from the Civil War straight through to the pandemic of 17, all the way around 16. We have never, never let our democracy take second fiddle. Way that We can both have a democracy and elections and at the same time correct the public health. It's a case where we cannot let. What does that mean? What does that mean? How does that even mean? What is he talking they, about? They quoted it here, so you could you could go through the translation. It's really amazing. We cannot let this. We've never allowed any crisis from the Civil War straight through to the pandemic of seventeen, all the way around sixteen. We can never never let our democracy sake second fiddle. Way they we can both have a democracy and correct uh, the public health. Uh, that is absolute. Uh, this mountain man gibberish is what that Poor is. Joe. I, I, I feel bad. That's, that's, uh, you know, but, even you know you'd think in this type of a structured environment, they'd at least have a teleprompter for him and do some editing before they let him out to the public. He no can't more live even, stuff. No more live stuff, Joe. He can't even answer a question with a full sentence, Mike. Yeah. That's what going on to. It's so sad. I really think Joe's had a stroke. I, think, I, I, I really thought he was suffering, and I do also believe he is suffering from early onset dementia. Yeah, I think you're right. But something about a month or two months ago happened to Joe. He yeah. went from saying stupid stuff to basically rambling incoherently. Yeah, now, yeah. Joe has always been known for stand up for shock. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're well, to be honest with you, I mean, we, we have fun with that, but some of that is what people loved about him, right? He talked off the cuff. He wasn't yeah. fake, right? right. I mean, I always said he was a genuine type of guy. He was he just, you know, what can I, and that, that is what appealed to people. We appealed oh, to him, but this yeah. is just, he's just lost it. Yeah. Oh, no, this is sad. I mean, this is, this has gone beyond we're making fun of Joe and, you know, Joe says stupid things. Like if you own a, uh, if you walk into a, a, a deli or a seven 11 donuts in, in my hometown, you can't do that without a slight Indian accent or, you know, <laughs> things he's said over the years you know yeah, stand up Chuck. stand up Ooh, ooh, he's yeah. in a wheelchair ooh, ooh. <laughs> Barack Obama was clean and articulate and you know for a nice young mm -hmm. African American fellow or whatever he said you know <laughs> all those things were you know endearing the Joe right you know corn pop with the hair on my leg and all those funny things yeah. but this is now to a point where he's just rambling yeah. coherently and somebody needs to just step up and say Joe you yeah. know we got to come up with a plan to get you off the stage the Democrats They've got to be sick because with this crisis that they've really allowed to really build up, the media has helped them out a ton. This is a great opportunity, but uh, they're going to squander it here. And where's Bernie? Where's Bernie been? Well, Bernie, Bernie been here. This is all good for Bernie. Bernie just added $4 trillion worth of government on. He loves it. So far, this will be the... the Bernie's you know, worried about his stock portfolio, Glenn. Yeah. <laughs> Bernie's with his financial planner now going, what the hell happened? I had 5 million bucks. I had 6 million bucks. We're, uh, we're obviously active on Twitter. I've had 
our Twitter feed up a bunch of the time. You are active on Twitter. We are uh, on uh, Facebook, Instagram. Um, if you're watching our, our YouTube channel, we appreciate that. Give us a like. We have different channels under our umbrella. So we have an educational side and the podcast and uh, our investment committee and, and so on. Uh, but, you know, utilize our website as a resource. You can find everything there at thefinancialguys.com. Uh, if you're listening on a podcast, thank you very much for downloading it. We appreciate that. Share this with your friends. It's really easy to share a podcast. I figured that out finally. You can just uh, actually text it to somebody. So share this message. We want to grow this uh, quite a bit. Don't forget to tune in on Saturday for our live radio show from one to three on multiple stations across the East coast. Thanks again for listening, watching, or however you enjoy the podcast today. We appreciate it.